Welcome to CED Mosbaz online video series. Uh, today we're going to cover Connected Components Programming, uh, Part 1, the controller. Okay, so here's our uh, Connected Components Workbench software. Um, to start off uh, with this video, we're going to just click New and we're going to try to add a controller. So in, in this video, we're going to focus on just adding the controller and getting around, uh, getting that set up. Uh, and then in the next parts, uh, the videos after this, we will um, cover the drives and the touchscreen. Uh, but for now, we're just going to focus on the controller. Um, I don't have a physical uh, micro controller, 800 controller here. But down here, you can see under the 850 selection, there's the uh, sim. So this is a software simulation of a controller that was added in version 12 that we can use uh, to simulate our program without a uh, hardware, the hardware in front of us. So we're going to select that, and this is the only version of that we can use to do the simulization. So we're going to do that, add project. When it comes up, it's going to show us the physical representation of our controller. You can see we don't have any plug-in modules or add-on modules on there yet. And uh, you'll see over here there's just an Ethernet port, uh, when in reality this controller would have a USB and serial port. And, but since this is a simulation, it only has the Ethernet, and it assumes the IP address of your PC, uh, so the computer you're running it on. So we don't have to set that up, but I'll get to how we can look at that here in a second. For now, let's look at these, these uh, tabs down at the bottom. Um, so in general, uh, that's the, uh, where you can rename your controller, whatever you'd like to. Uh, memory, pretty self-explanatory. This is uh, how much you've used, how much is left. Startup and fault. So the mode behavior is the, what you want it to do on startup. Do you want it to just go right to run mode, or do you want it to assume the same mode it was in when it lost power? Um, and then this fault override, do you want it to try to clear the fault on its own and keep running, or do you want it to wait for operator interaction to clear the fault? Uh, Ethernet, we'll cover that in a second. Interrupts, um, so those of you uh, that have programmed with 500, 5,000, know uh, you can interrupt the program the running program uh, on an event. So that's that's what this is here for. Uh, and then the embedded I.O., uh, this is just if you wanted to put a filter on here or a latch, just like you would with an I.O. module in 5000, you can set that up here. Plug-in modules and expansion modules, this is where if you had any plug-in modules in any of these, you could right-click on this empty, add whatever your plug-in module is, or your expansion module, and it would show up up at the top here and allow you to configure it here. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that since we don't have any of those here. Uh, so back to the ethernet port, what I'm gonna show you is that um, the configuration of the other ports and the other networks that this can handle. I'll handle that just next. So for these uh, network ports, um, in, like I said, in reality, you would have a serial and USB here. So if, if you are using the simulator to program and you tested, um, and now you're like, oh, I have some Modbus um, that I need to put on my physical controller when it comes in from the order from Mosba, um, it's just as easy to switch the controller by coming up here out to where the controller is on the left side, right click and go change controller. And then over here on the the side, you can change what controller you need it to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the um, real world equivalent of the controller we have simulated. And we're just going to hit OK just so I can show you the network ports that come in here. So there they are. There's our uh, serial port, our Ethernet port. And then down here at the bottom, you can see we have a couple other options that showed up because of the controller we selected that were not available on our simulation. One of them being the serial port. So the serial port is just like any other serial port in the past. You do have to set up your baud rate and your what your driver is. Is it Modbus? Is it ASCII? Is it serial? Um, and then you know what what your protocol is. Uh, USB just enable or disable. As we know, USB does not need any configuration. So if we're going to enable it or disable it, uh, you can use USB port for programming, monitoring, um, firmware flashing, things like that. Uh, so if you don't want somebody to be able to come up and plug into the controller and get online with it, you can just disable the USB port. Uh, the Ethernet port, again, pretty self-explanatory. You can get it. Um, 
you can assign the Ethernet settings just like you would with any other Rockwell controller. Uh, the only thing that's different is down here at the bottom, just like with the Micro Logix 1400, this controller, these controllers ha are capable of Modbus TCP. So if you would like to enable that, you can do that down here. And then over here on the left, you can see that there's a Modbus mapping. So from here, if you wanted to map, um, say, uh, a digital, an embedded digital out to a Modbus address, it's just that easy. So now, the out of that Modbus or out of that Ethernet port, this would allow this a, a mapping on the Modbus network. It's pretty easy. The real time clock, this is um, available if you have a plugin module. Uh, the plugin module is called the MemBac RTC real time clock. So this will back up your um, uh, project as well. So it's a memory card equivalent and a real time clock. If you're using a micro 820, it has a the micro 820 has a real time clock um, inside in, inside the uh, controller, so you don't need this module. What this real time clock menu does is it a it, you can enable the firmware to run the real time clock if that module is uh, for some reason disabled, pulled out, broken, stops working. Now the the firmware real time clock is not going to be as accurate. Uh, so this should only be a temporary thing. But that's that's if this was an 820, all of this would already be filled in for you. But we don't have that module, so we're not doing that. Uh, for the data log, um, we will cover the data log and the recipe functions in other videos as well. So that's a layout out of our controller. Uh, since we're done, since we're going to go ahead and simulate this, and I don't need these ports right now, I'm going to change my controller back to our sim model so that we can simulate our program once we get to it. Okay, so now we're back um, to our simulation. Simulation. So uh, just to cover the, with the left hand side here, we have our programs. So from here we can add our programs. We'll get to that in just a second. We have our global variables. So this is uh, sort of like controller uh, tags in, in 5000. So these, these are the variables that are available throughout the project, not just in one uh, program. So you can see our, our embedded IO is all in here. Um, user defined function blocks, um, there's none in here yet, but if you would like to make a user defined instruction, uh, this is where it would go. Um, as well as um, any uh, downloaded sample function blocks from Rockwell, they have a lot, they have uh, one uh, for drives on Ethernet and things like that, um, high-speed counters, encoders, things like that. So they would actually get dropped into here um, where you could drag them into the program. And as well as data types uh, down here, if there's any user-defined data types and things. So we're going to go ahead and just create a, a simple program and uh, to start and stop a motor and, or a drive and control its speed. And then we'll download it to the uh, simulator just so we can see it run. So to start a program, we're just going to right click on programs and add. So you can see we can do structured text, uh, ladder or function block in here. We're going to focus on ladder today. Uh, so let's just go ahead and click on that. Program one. Uh, so we can rename this whatever we'd like. Uh, and also we get our local variable. So this would be the equivalent of um, program tags in Logix 5000. So to bring up our program, let's just double click on it and get started on it. Um, so up here is your normal um, uh, favorites, just like you would see in 5000 across the top here, we have our different menus uh, for our different functions that we can put in here. Uh, we're just going to start real basic and bring down a contact. And you can see it defaults us to create um, a variable in the local variables. If you'd like to create one in global so that it can be used throughout the program, then you can do that as well. So we're just going to start here with our start function. We're just going to hit OK. And then we're going to drag down a normally closed and call it our stop function. I'm putting these in global variables so that I can access them throughout the, like I said, throughout the controller, throughout the application, rather than just in this program. And we're going to do a contact is our run. 
And of course, like any good little programmer, we're going to put our seal in bit down here. an extra one so let's just delete that so there we go there's our starter um as you know though we're not tied to the outside world right now so this program wouldn't do anything without some sort of uh outside input so let's go ahead and add a few rungs here to tie our embedded io which is right here our io on our micro 50 digital input zero to turn on our start and then we're going to put in digital input o1 to turn on our start and then we're going to do our run command to turn on an output and just use output zero so there we go. Simple motor starter. Uh, one other thing I would like to do is just to show you the move command. So what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to take, we're going to assume we have a, um, a, a pot, uh, an external pot connected to our analog input one. And, it, and we're just going to move that to our analog output one. Now, this controller doesn't have any analog outputs on it. So what we're going to do is come back to our micro 850 right here and down in our plugin modules we're going to right click add an analog input configure it the voltage for our potentiometer and then we're going to add an analog output and this is a current that's going to go right to our drive let's say um, so in in the micro 850s there their um, analogs are based on a zero to 65, um, three, five, three, five, um, the, uh, the integer base. So any scaling you want to do with real numbers, you would have to do that. And we will cover that. Um, and when we get to the drive functionality, but in this case, we're just going to bring our move command in here. Oop, I already brought it in. We're going to move our, you can see our plugin module, so P1 plugin module one, analog input one, right into our analog output. There we go. So there we go. We'll save that. Come back to our micro 850 page. And now we don't have a controller to download. So the first thing we need to do to be able to run the simulator is go up here to tools and micro 800 simulator. So let's start that up. Turn it on, power it up. You can see the IP address is there. Yep, it's just telling us the simulator can only operate in run mode for 10 minutes. Um, this is something to touch on that uh, I only have the standard edition of the software. You can see up here, so this is the free edition. So the simulator will run for 10 minutes. If you have the developer edition, the simulator will run longer. Um, I believe it's an hour or so. Um, but it this is not meant to be a replacement for an actual controller. So uh, this is only for testing, so it will not run indefinitely. So let's hit OK there. We are going to put this in program so that we can download to it. We'll just leave that running in the background. So let's go ahead and go to download. We'll bring up our RS links. After it does a build, it'll tell us down here, build succeeded. That's good. We don't have any errors. Ethernet. And there's our simulator running. So let's download to it. download with our project values that just overwrites any values might exist in the controller uh, for the same tag names so here's our simulator it's it's running we can come over here to our program um, let's bring this up computers thinking so here's our program running you can see red um, means true uh, blue is not true so you can see that um, our start button is not on. So let's bring up our simulator and we'll watch these bits over here. So with the simulator, we can hit, we can turn on our input zero. 
Oh, we have to go to run. That helps, huh? So let's go to run. Yep. So our input zero is on. Our start command comes on. Our run command comes on. We can see that here. So let's turn off our start command. We can see that turns off here, but our run stays on. And if we hit our stop, our run command drops out. We toggle that back. So this is a nice tool to check what you've done real quick to see if your code's going to work. And then again, from a down here in our um, analog, so our analog input, we can put a value in here of say 5,000. It's gonna move that value, bang 5,000 right out to here. So without a scaling block, um, like I said, this is scaled for, for the double integer, the 16-bit integer. So um, this will uh, need to be scaled for real-time values. Uh, and we'll get, like I said, we'll get to that when we start on the panel view on another, in part three, I believe. So once again, thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out future and current videos by subscribing to CED Mosbaugh Electric Supply on YouTube or visiting www.mosbaugh.com media. Thanks again.